please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Yakten or The Hunt Movie Thoughts I quite liked the, the escalation of the whole thing. I, you kind of got the feeling that at some point Nadja was going to start believing it as well and seriously ask him, you know, because it's, it's that kind of thing, you know, we, we can't help but think, you know, where, where there's smoke, there's fire. So at some point she just gives in, everybody else, everybody but him is saying that he did it. And eventually she just gives in. I also quite like the, excuse me, the detail of the, you know, the, the immigration that she, I, I don't know, she seemed like she was from Eastern Europe with, with the, you know, occasionally she'd break into something, it sounded Eastern European, but I can't be sure. And yeah, just this stuff of, you know, should we talk English to her or will she understand the Danish and, and all this stuff. And yeah, it just, it, it was quite, it had an impact on, on him and us when that happened to, yeah, to, to hear that from her. And you can kind of understand his reaction, although, it, like, like I say in the review, it, if, you know, he overreacts at times, and that does, that was maybe one of the times, but yeah. I am, I am a little mixed on the ending where they're suddenly together again and everyone is having fun and enjoying being together again and this whole thing and then finally someone shoots at him and we don't find out who because they were standing in the sun and clearly it was just to scare him to tell him it hasn't been forgotten, watch out, and possibly because of have, him having just carried Clara over the floor. I, and I do think that it's a good note to end on, that it never really ends something like that. Because by then, he had been cleared. It, the, the police, uh, the court, decided that there was not enough to go on. It seemed too much like it was, you know, fabricated. This thing, like, like the, the the friend said, the the Godfather to Marcus, you know, after saying that he was going to make him an offer he couldn't refuse, he said that they got this image of a basement from somewhere. TV, the parents, something, and they and and they thought that they were supposed to go along with it because when children just hear that this is how things are supposed to be, they want to do like mommy and daddy say. So they're going to. You know, I, I suppose I should say for those who don't watch my video review of the movie again, I'm not trying to say that children just lie about this stuff. Some allegations are false. Many are not, and obviously it should always be investigated, and when an adult has any kind of sexual, yeah, with, with a child, obviously that is wrong. Now, the, I'm, I'm so impressed with Clara, the, the girl's acting was phenomenal, and just, all these, you know, she, she feels bad about it. She didn't want to hurt him. 
And she even says, it was just a story I told. And the mother is so devastating. She says, maybe you have trouble admitting that it happened. And that's why it's so good that you did, that you did tell us. And it, and, and that's the problem with, that is, that is the negative side of that coin. It's, it's of course, it is true that many repress the negative feelings that come from that. And, yeah, and sometimes that is what, yeah, and, and, and sometimes they do later retract even though it did happen. And that is, you know, that, that is kind of the problem when there is then not really, uh, yeah. Now, the... Some of what I did not completely believe was the shop people, the clerks, not that, not, not the Smith movie, Kevin Smith, that's it, and not the badass Kevin Smith, the late Ares of Xena and Hercules. The clerks got very violent. I believe that some would get violent towards him, that some would seek vigilante justice, but I do not believe that it would be shop owners and, in, and during like business hours like that. I, I mean, they do have other customers, and not all of these customers are going to appreciate a man being beaten in front of them, even if he, even if they too think that he did something horrible. And yeah, it's, especially once it got to the the cans being thrown at him once he was already outside, and then he goes in and headbutts the guy, and yeah, that entire bit was a bit much. I did quite like the bit in the church where he keeps seeing Agnes whisper to Theo and it is this thing of everybody is talking about me behind my back and I didn't do anything and the whole thing and, and how Theo takes it when he, he hits him. That was actually something I I could imagine that Johan, the, the guy, the, the really big guy, who also hit Marcus, I could imagine that he might hit Lucas if uh, just like, just passing him. Or, you know, in some kind of situation, but the, the shopkeepers, not as much. They're getting a lot of different titles today. Maybe a raise, too. And... Yeah, the, I think that might more or less cover what I very much wanted to. The, yeah, I, th I think that covers the majority at least of the serious stuff I wanted to say. So now for my terrible, terrible jokes. When, when Marcus is, uh, you know, when, when the movie goes all fear on us, yes, the, the Marky Mark movie, I watched that. Reese Witherspoon's in it, come on. When they get all fear on the dog, and Marcus is all like, what's in the bag? Come on. And then he goes on and has a little funeral for the dog. You know, I, I do, I wonder if he waited for it to rain just so it would look especially dramatic. It's a nice touch that its tongue was out, and I know that it might actually be realistic. I think that would actually happen if the dog was hung like a horse, which it does appear to have been. 
But it does look a bit silly. I don't know, maybe it's all the cartoons we've seen where people get knocked out and the tongue is out. And yeah, I, I just... Yeah, I, I kind of think when, when Dr. Dr. Nick tells Bart, can you roll your eyes back to the back of your head and stick your tongue out your mouth? Oh, you mean like I'm... was it, like dead? Knocked up, something like that. Yeah, that's it. And, and he does it. And that's kind of what I think of when I see something like that. And when Theo appears in Lucas's house with what appears to be hot food, I mean, he says it's delicious. I don't think that it would be delicious if it hadn't been reheated. I don't know if he used the microwave or something. And he got through what I assume was a locked door. Was it him who threw, threw that brick through a window? Maybe he just did that again and used it to lock himself in. If he didn't, however, considering the season, does that qualify him as an elf? Maybe a reverse elf? I think the... Oh, wait, is that Santa Claus who comes and take, takes your milk and cookies and leaves presents? Uh, so it's good that they have this. A nice bit of capitalism, you know. Supply and demand. You want presents? He wants milk and cookies. And I know it's horrible of me to say, but you could make a drinking game out of this movie if, yeah, for, for uh, take a shot every time someone's crying. <laughs> Maybe take two if they're crying over the phone. I like that even the ex-wife is crying on the phone when it's, uh, you know, when, when the kid goes slow, I, I guess it makes sense. It, if someone is close to being an unreasonable, uh, you know, an awful person character, it would probably be her. It's maybe because we don't see her and we only hear her just being unreasonable over the phone. And I do, that is actually something that is worth bringing up seriously. That actually isn't, that does happen. And again, I'm not trying to say that women aren't... It's not all women, but some women get vindictive when they get a divorce, and they... Yeah, they, they demand, you know, the, the custody, and the father only gets, you know, to see the kid every other week, and weekend, and, and stuff like that, and it's... Yeah, sometimes that is really, really tough on the father, and... Yeah. So, I'm, I'm glad that they are pointing that out, and I appreciate that he did. That was when I was afraid that he was turning into a Gary Stu. Lucas literally says, it's, it's okay, you know, and, and then when he talks to, to, to Marcus, he's like, be nice to your mother, you know, it's, it's, this is tough for her too. It's, yeah, that was a, maybe a little excessive kindness. But, yeah. Speaking of excessive, I don't think I would have spat in Clara's face. I, I guess, I, I, yeah, he's, he's being protective of his father. And obviously he has more relationship with his father than, yeah, but that was a little... And it also seems a little bit, I don't know, maybe forced? This whole thing of he's like, he's supposed to call his mother to be taken back home to his mother. And he. Yeah, and he finally does go back home to his mother, you know, after the whole, you know, pet cemetery thing. As I don't think many people you know, go through a Stephen King experience and, uh, yeah, come out happier, exactly, and, I mean, it always is a tragedy when owners survive their pets. No, wait, no, that's not how it goes. When pets have to bury their owners, especially if the pet is a small bird, but then it's a whole body mass issue and, you know, moving and moving all that dirt, it's just, I'm sorry, I, t I told you these would be terrible. And, 
Yes, so he's he's supposed to call, and there's like you know there's no key out there because that's Nadja that Nadja still has it, and he you know Lucas hasn't gotten it back yet, so there's no key for him to lock himself in, and he stands over the cell phone and then he decides not to, and at first he's asking Theo, do you have the key? And it sort of makes sense because they're friends and all, but then he goes in and wants to talk to Clara and this whole thing, and I don't know, it just seems like. It could have happened without the key being missing, and it just seems like they really needed to force that scene in there, and this confrontation between Marcus and Clara, just, yeah. And although I'm not advocating that they actually have a, you know, 15-year-old kid spit on a small girl, I do think it was a bit obvious that he didn't actually spit on her, he just did the movement, and then they cut to her, and she has some, yeah, yeah, now the, I think that might more or less cover it, I do want to talk a little bit about Grade, I'm sorry, I don't, Greth, Grethel, Grethel, that's right, Hansel and Grethel, that's how y'all would pronounce it, we say Grade, when she hears the accusation, at first, she doesn't, when, when, when Clara just says, he has a pee-pee, and she laughs and says, most, most boys and men do, and it's because, again, that's, if, if she had taken it seriously as an accusation at that point, we wouldn't believe the rest of the movie, it would have a lot less weight, but no, it goes further. She's then, well, well, it's, it's stiff as a stick, I think was the, yeah, I'm, I'm translating all this into English, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry. I, I need more sleep. I'm a little grumpy. Don't take it personally, anonymous person watching this video. I did have to ask my father, I didn't, I don't quite see guys walking up to the, I, wasn't one of them Clara's brother? I don't know, I guess they were like drunk. I did get that impression from them and they were watching porn. Presumably it was like, you know, wireless internet connection. And they show the screen to her and she sees, yeah, stiff as a stick. So, yeah, it just, I don't know. I guess, especially if they were drunk or if they were like, you know, if they thought she was annoying and they wanted to, you know, make her uncomfortable or something, I guess it maybe. But but yeah, it's only when that gets said because at that point she can't see it as being something other than sexual. How would Clara? How would she? Excuse me. How would she come to that? If it, it would at least at the very least, require her to know, you know, a little bit about sexuality, without necessarily knowing that it's sexuality, but, yeah, and it's not even, it's not immediate, it's this, she, she says, I guess it's the next day or something, but that, yeah, that she can't quite get it out of her head, she just has to deal with it, you know, it's not, it, she doesn't jump to the conclusion, she thinks about it, and, yeah, it does, you know, you, again, you need that, you, it, it can't just, they can't seem reactionary, because then again, we don't completely believe them, but, yeah, as it progresses then, and as the, you know, the therapist, the, the, that conversation, I'll get a little bit more into that, in a few seconds, she she does come to fully believe it, and she she gets these images in her head that she can't get out, and at that point it's just set in stone in her mind. She yeah, and of course she and I appreciate that also the the line that she says to Agnes, "I'm sorry we couldn't protect your daughter." It's that that's she feels like she has failed. She feels like something. 
and, and that's also part of why it becomes so important to her that she can't, you know, and yeah, his, his denial of it doesn't, isn't enough, you could say. Now, the, yes, the, the talk with the therapist was, and, and in general, I think the, the women in this movie tend to be characterized as very protective, especially of children, and you could call that a bit of a stereotype, but yes, that, you know, it makes sense, and and it, again, it's, not, it's not a negative stereotype, it's not to the point where they, you know, before the accusation comes to, you know, comes to them, they don't think about that at all. So it's not like they just want something to be wrong. It's when the accusation is aired, then they start to, it, it you know, starts that radar going, and then it gets hyperactive, you could say. It gets, it starts reading false positives. The therapist, Again, he's clearly not, he's, he's doing it with the best of intentions. He's not trying to bully Clara into giving answers he wants, but he is asking leading questions. He is getting her into a situation where she sort of, she thinks that she's supposed to answer yes to something, and she does, without it being true. And I also really like the, yes, I, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say about the therapist. Also, fantastic. I wish I could remember his name, but he's always impressive. Now, the... Clara. I like how her, her imagination is sort of established early on. There's that thing of, you know, she can't... She can't walk home. Because she doesn't remember how she got here. She can't look both down and up. So she can't look up to see where she's going, and she can't. She has to look down because she doesn't want to step on any lines. And this is also very cute when we see her, you know, walking alongside him, and she's avoiding all the lines. And it, it, I did that as a kid, you know. I think I also chased my shadow for a brief while. It's just, it's a silly little thing kids do, and it just, it establishes she has, you know, a lot of imagination and. And it's a part of it is of course also so so yes when when the accusation is made we all already know that she has a vivid imagination that she sometimes says and does things that yeah I, I did it did bother me a little when he sent her home I hope they didn't live too far apart I was thinking that maybe he could send Nadja with her. Or something. I get why it would be a problem if he showed up at Theo's door and said, here she is. Here you have her back. <laughs> that would not end well. But I figured Nadja, yeah, I, I just really hope that she didn't have far to go. I think that was a little bit of an oversight in an otherwise great script. By the way, this was written by Thomas Vindabat and his writing partner, who I really should have memorized the name of, I'm very sorry, to him. I apologize to him. He also helped write Submarino along with Thomas Vindabat, which, again, is a fantastic script. Anyway, yes, the... I, I really get the impression that she likes Lucas more than her father, in a way. Her father is a little distant towards her. When, when he brings her home to Theo, when Luke brings her home to Theo, she, he isn't that, you know, he isn't falling over her and like really relieved, oh, she's back and this whole thing. It's just kind of, ah, oh, that's where you are. And then, you know, like this morning, they're arguing and they're arguing so loud that she can't stand being in the house, and she slipped away. She was, you know, there was, and, and he, he calls them in and, and says, you know, ah, oh, and I don't know where Clara is. She's right out here. I can hear you all the way out here. Is it okay if I just take her to the kindergarten? Oh, yeah, sure. Bye. 
Yeah, um, and you, you got the sense that there was a bit of a strained relationship between Agnes and him. And again, it's not that either of them are bad people, it's just there are, there are some problems there, and he's maybe not being as attentive as he should be towards her. And because of that, uh, yeah, Lucas, she, she has a little bit of a crush on him. There, there is that, it's, uh, Electra complex, I guess, is where, where, like, you know, the, the little girl wants to marry her father kind of thing, and, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a sweet little cute innocent thing. Obviously, she doesn't actually want something bad to happen to him. It's just that, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that would be more okay if it was her actual father. It's, you know, he's also he's made uncomfortable by it, and I, I really feel like it made sense the way it happened. You know, she makes this heart and puts it in his jacket, and he... and, and then he's playing with the boys, like, wrestling, in, in air quotes. Triple air quotes, even. And he's playing dead. And then she climbs on and just... and, and kisses him right on the lips, and he didn't... It happened so fast that he couldn't really react, and then he tells her, you know, it's nice with this heart and this kiss, but you you shouldn't kiss anyone but your father, presumably also the mother, and, oh wait, wait, he, maybe he said other boys than your father, anyway, and you should give this heart to one of the boys, and then she won't own up to it, she, and, and it's this kind of thing where she kind of, she's, she's caught in something that she, she, she's supposed to not do, and then she immediately backpedals, and that's, you know, we also see that with the allegation, and then it becomes this kind of thing of, oh no, she's scared of him, so she won't a admit to it, and, yeah, and, and that's how, that's, that's why she's angry with him, and when she then, says the thing to, to Grete. Yeah, that's that's where it all falls apart. And I think the movie did a fantastic job really crafting this scenario where it could happen, setting up all the different elements, setting up how often how how yeah, how, how often Lucas was with the different children and how close he was with them, you know, the you know, the, the pooping scene, for example, it, you just, you really got a sense of how much he loved these children, and then for him to be accused, excuse me, I mean, one thing is all this, all these horrible things that happened to him, that the, these would be horrible to any person, you know, losing your job, losing all this, all the respect, being completely isolated, and you know, having canned goods thrown at you, I mean, that's happened to me, I just, all I said was that the guitar was not in tune. I didn't expect the Spanish Inquisition. Oh, phew. I'm sorry. And that's that's two in like in like just two videos. That's that's terrible. Gotta get some new material. Anyway, the he loses all of that, but he also loses being with these children, being, you know, and it, it was clear that he enjoyed making them happy, and, yeah, I believe that is everything I have, so, yeah, if there's anything I didn't cover here that you would like my opinion on or anything, be sure to ask it down below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.